Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I kind of want to go ahead and cover, and I think I did this already, but I want to be like more specific in this video. Uh, I want to go ahead and cover my Freeze Pulse Totem Scion, uh, which is going to be played in, I believe it's this Tuesday, so this Tuesday or this Monday, uh, because of New Zealand time as it gets mixed up a little bit, for the Beta Wipe. Now I also have another build for you guys after this video, I'll produce another one, which is going to be my Crit Arcmines character. This is actually a Crit Freeze Pulse Totem character. Now the reason why I want to play Freeze Pulse Totems in the beta, and not necessarily for live, uh, and you can play them for live too, is I feel that they're getting pretty strong in the beta. So let me first go ahead and start by explaining my ascendancy options. So, with the first off section, we're going to go ahead and go Hierophant. So the reason for Hierophant is that Hierophant actually gives us 25% increased maximum mana, skills in your helm can have one additional totem summoned at a time so if you look at this as like a league starter having a four link helmet like a joffrey's or something and having three totems out is actually pretty solid also if you were to realistically craft with an essence of horror a horror essence would give 30 percent more elemental damage to skills in your helmet but this is just something to like a little additive bonus it's not something we really need to build around you gain 10 percent of mana as extra energy shield which doesn't really matter because we're going to be going acrobatics with our build it's also kind of hard to juggle so many different forms of defenses like Mind Over Matter, Life Pool, and Energy Shield, so I kind of just scrapped that. But you get a 50% chance to you gain a Power Charge when you place a Totem. This means that this is up absolutely 100% of the time. All you have to do is pull out a Totem, and you get a Power Charge. So that's like guaranteed, always have Power Charges. Um, so with our template, oh actually that's pretty much it. We'll also get a skill point right here, so that's one thing that's pretty cool. The Scion Ascendancy I think gets two additional skill points now compared to what it had before. So after that we're going to go ahead and move over to the Ranger and we're going to pick up Deadeye. Deadeye gives us 30% prod speed. The Pierce doesn't do anything, but 30% prod speed is pretty good for spells since spells don't really get much projectile speed with the exception of quality on their skill gem. And maybe like a few nodes in, well actually like one node in Shadow and a couple in Ranger. There's like a Shadow node right here. Okay, but uh, Deadeye also gives us projectiles gain damage as they travel further. So it's not attacks, it's just projectiles gain damage as they travel further. Which means that our Freeze Pulse will do up to 50% increased damage. Not a multiplier, just a nice damage increase. And then skills fire an additional projectile. Now the last time I played... Uh, freeze Pulse Totems, I used a jewel called Reign of Splinters. Reign of Splinters, this is when it came out in the beta, or I think it was in the old beta when it came out. Totems fire two additional projectiles, but you have reduced totem damage, which actually hurts quite a bit, because you could think to yourself, in play, instead of losing 30% reduced damage and gaining two additional projectiles, I could have a jewel that gave me 30% increased damage, which is pretty huge. So with the new changes to Threshold Jewels, we have the availability to use the first snow, which pretty much every Freeze Pulse build uses, I believe. So this automatically gives us GMP on our totems. And then due to the Deadeye, we actually get six. So we have six, uh, essentially, projectiles shooting out of our Freeze Pulse totems, which will cover probably like a third to half of the screen. Uh, and then if you have two, it'll probably be like, it's gonna be pretty massive. Um, of course, I haven't actually played this yet. This is waiting for the beta. But I'm super stoked for this character specifically, and I'm going to keep going through and explaining kind of why. So, this is kind of what the build is going to look like when it's fully pol uh, polished and completely finished. Just to give you guys a little understanding of kind of how it works. Um, on the left hand side, now this is a 110 point build because Cyan is minus 5 points because she gets 5 skill points. This has 158 life with 171 mana. Remember now that Mind Over Matter is 50% conversion. It's not 30% if you use Cloak of Defiance. Uh, this build also gets quite a bit of crit. We get 80 crit multi with while wielding a staff, with 40 crit multi, with 60 crit multi for spells, with another 45% crit multi, or sorry, this is global crit chance, uh, crit multi while wielding a staff. So this is like, what, 150 crit multi from the tree, which is okay. We get 40% flash charges gained, flask effect duration, 20% uh, flask effect duration is pretty nice. I did end up dropping Alchemist in this current setup, I can get it back, it's just I was trying to knock the points as little as possible, and I don't even have Shamanistic Dominion, which kind of sucks, but I mean you can't grab anything or everything unfortunately. 
122% totem damage, 56% placement speed, or sorry, 91% uh, placement speed. Spells cast by totems have 20% cast speed, and then our stats are awesome. I don't know if you guys can see this at the bottom. Let me go ahead and move my webcam. Our stats are awesome because we cover everything. We don't have to worry about using any stat gear. And that's the benefit of going Scion as well, is you don't really have to worry about stats. Uh, 200 dex, 200 int, and almost 200 strength, which is pretty cool. So moving on to the next part, uh, I kind of want to go ahead and sort of build the tree for you guys a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit reset really fast on this character. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with proj damage, grab our jewel early. Uh, we're probably not going to have totems right away, right? So we're not really going to grab totem notes. So we'll just go through and skip to about maybe here. Let's go up. Now, this tree is going to kind of suck because we don't have any damage at the beginning, but we can still use Freeze Pulse. Like, it, it should be okay. It shouldn't be, like, too terrible. Um, just get, like, a 4-link or something right away. When it, Well, actually, this is, like, level, what, 17? So, yeah, I don't know. Just fucking use Freeze Pulse. Just Freeze Pulse your heart out, man. It's going to work. I promise. It'll be better in the end. <laughs> so, this gets us Mind Over Matter. But we really, really, really want to get to our double totem, like, ASAP. And that's not too bad. Now you can change the pathing if you want. Like obviously you could come down through here. It's just I'm gonna try to respec as little as possible. And I know that the second I get totems going on my build, it's gonna be done. So basically, once you get to Ancestral Bond, you've got the ability to pick up uh, Totemic Mastery is here. You've got Totemic Zeal here. You have uh, Shamanistic Fury right here. Mind Over Matters here. Let's grab our Jewel and Quick Recovery. Now, uh, if you're using a staff already, go ahead and grab Serpent Stance. If you're not, just feel free to grab Crit, whatever. Since Freeze Pulse is a 6% base crit spell, it actually is really, really solid because of that. Uh, let's see, where else can we go? We've got the option of going into Occultist Dominion, Annihilation, and then two points, Heart and Soul. Actually, even this point's really good. And then after this, I'm going to grab... Power charges. Now, the reason why I want to grab power charges, this is also why I kind of want to move towards instability, is because there are three weapons, well, mainly two, but three weapons that we can kind of mess around with in this build that are really solid. Well, actually, hold on, I'm retarded. I just realized that we're not using a staff. I don't even know why. This is my arc mine build. Just disregard what I said. I was getting too much of a hard on for my arc miner. Um, Okay, so with the with the Tallfall build, sorry, not Tallfall, we've got Tallborn, Tallfall, and Void Battery. So with these three, these are all pretty much all reliant on power charges. And remember that as a as a Hierophant, we get 50% chance to gain a power charge when you place a totem, right? So between these three, you have Tallborn, which is the 24 version, which you would ideally use for leveling. 15% cast speed, 20% spell damage. Uh, this power charge doesn't do anything. You get flat cold damage to spells per power charge, which is actually really strong. Like, I'm going to pull up an added cold just to compare. An added cold gem at level 20 is 125 to 188, right? If I had 10 power charges on this character, which is not possible, but just, to, just imagine you had 10 power charges, it would be 100 to 200, which is... Pretty much more than an added cold level 20. So we get three base, four from uh, overcharge. Ideally, I want to grab Templar, which is five, and then avoid battery is six. So it's probably as good as like a level 15, 16 added cold just for using that weapon, which is pretty, pretty cool. This little guy right here, this little Tallborn. And you get cast speed on top of it too. Tallfall is a little different because Tallfall gives uh, more spell damage, same amount of um, cast speed. Quite a bit more spell, uh, cold damage per power charge, but you lose all your power charges on reaching maximum power charges, and then you gain a frenzy charge on reaching maximum power charges, and then you get increased cold damage per frenzy charge. But this is kind of interesting because I don't know if I could properly juggle a tall fall. It really depends on how fast I'm going, but this is definitely another option as well um, to use, and I have to see what's going to be better between Tullborn, tall fall, and Void Battery as well. Because Void Battery is 20% spell cast speed, or increased cast speed, reduced spell damage. You get a big chunk of spell damage right here. Uh, you get global crit chance. The main important parts, though, is you get mana. Mana is effective life for us because we're 50% conversion. 
plus one max power charges is pretty huge for our build. And then 25% increased spell damage per power charge. So I feel like it's going to be fun to play around with these three weapons uh, and see kind of where our character kind of lies. Let's go ahead and move on and continue this though. So with this character, we're going to go ahead and swap and come down into here, grab our jewel socket, move in, grab primal spirits with ballistic mastery for prod speed and prod damage. Heart of Oak is really good. Flash freeze, the node that nobody ever uses, gives us prod speed. It's pretty nice. Grab our Herbalism, grab some more Crit Multi, and we have Phase Acrobatics. Now, the interesting thing with this character is I think originally, or initially, I'm probably going to grab Hierophant just to get, like, Power Charge on Crit, basically, or Power Charge on Totem Placement. So either you go for Hierophant as your, probably your first or your second, or you go for Deadeye, because Deadeye is going to give you Prod Speed, and Hierophant's going to give you a crit chance. So, I don't know. It's entirely up to you really well. I probably am going to grab Deadeye first, to be honest. I'll probably grab Deadeye and then grab, like, Hierophant for Merc Lab. And then Uber Lab is going to be Path of the Ranger. Now, remember that you get one, two, three, four, five additional points for playing Scion, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to show you what you can do with those five points. You ready? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Don't count this one. Four, five six seven done look at that beautiful so by doing this we're able to grab a 16 proj node now these are all uh evasion and life nodes so it's pretty nice it puts us back up to 101 percent max life as you can tell hardcore viable build um but not really we just got to pretty much fill in our life notes because i i scrapped off this point which i didn't mean to um, so i'll just grab herbalism this should put us to 120 then we've got life to fill on in the Scion life wheel. And of course, you should do this to your own accord, you know, whenever you feel it's necessary to put in life. Now, the other cool thing about this is that it's pretty flexible with kind of like the ways that you can you can move around your tree, right? There's another way to path instead if you want more damage. Like if you don't want to grab the two nodes here, you could potentially path in through like power charge duration. Which remember, duration isn't bad if you want to use Tull Fall or Tull Born. I forgot which one it is. Because it's gonna re it's gonna basically remove your charges and grant you a frenzy charge. Well, actually, duration would be irrelevant then, so don't worry about it. That'd be frenzy charge duration you'd want. So this is another way to to kind of move it around. I don't plan on running any auras with this build uh, right away, just simply because uh, we're gonna be using mind over matter. So there's really no point. You want to have as much mana open as possible. Uh, you have the option at righteous decree here, which is mana. In my, like, full build, I'm pretty sure it's better to come up, like, through here, grab Power Charge, Spell Damage for Power Charge, Jewel, Alchemist, Move Across, Cruel Preparation, Deep Thoughts. That's, like, super good, but that's so many points, so I didn't really bother with that. The other interesting thing about this is, I don't know if you can or not, would this hit Inspired Learning? I don't think it will hit Inspired Learning. One, two, nah, I'd have to get, like, that wouldn't work. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is just another another interesting option to do uh, with the build that I think is going to be super good. And some other, I guess, two other items just to kind of go over. I, actually, just kind of one. There's the Pandemonious, which is the upgrade of a Halcyon, which is the Cold Breach exclusive. Now, the reason why I bring this up is this actually gives 30% cold damage, um, 40 cold rest, so it actually has a resistance on it. Chill enemy for one second when hit. Blind enemies on hit or blind chilled enemies on hit none of that really matters i mean the chill enemy on one hit is pretty cool because like if you get hit um like on a boss it'll chill it which is pretty cool i don't know how long the chill effect lasts for though but damage penetrates 20 percent cold resistance against chilled enemies so chilling also counts as being frozen if you're frozen your attack is being chilled that's how hypothermia works unless they change that calculation over um so this would just be 20 percent cold pen which would actually, I'm pretty sure, put us to like 110% cold pen or potentially like 90 something cold pen. I forgot. My Arc Miner had 90 cold pen. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Uh, this is not the new Mind Over Matter, or no, this is not the new Cloak of Defiance, sorry. The new Cloak of Defiance has Mind Over Matter with 20% additional. It also gives up to like 250 max mana. And it gives, what, what's the other one it gives? It's something cool 1% uh, of mana regen per second which is pretty nice because if you have 5k mana, that's like 50 mana per second. So that's pretty much my freeze pulse totem character. 
Uh, I can't really go into too detailed uh, of the links. I mean, I guess I can kind of like write up some some little basic ones. I didn't do, I didn't think about this part. Oh yeah, one other thing to tag in. I didn't show it, but uh, this build gets where's the projectile speed here? I know it's in here somewhere. Weapon. We're gonna find it, boys. General. Okay, so we get 65 prod speed from the tree, and then I'm pretty sure freeze pulse gets like 40% prod speed or something else. Uh, so I'm pretty sure with Freeze Pulse quality and Merc Lab Enchant or Uber Lab Enchant, we can get like 135 prod speed before like modifying gear with the exception of obviously the enchant. So this is going to give our Freeze Pulse the ability to hit the entire screen, which is beautiful. I'm super, super, super excited for that. And then as it loses damage, as it, you know, goes further, it also will gain a little bit of damage um, because the projectiles gain damage as they travel further, dealing up to 50% increased damage. So it's not going to totally negate it, but I feel like it might be a kind of a cool synergy with Deadeye. Okay, so in terms of links that we're going to use, and I'm totally building this off the top of my head, so please don't judge me. Obviously, we've got Freeze Pulse, like number one requirement. We've got, uh, I'm going to assume Spell Totem, right, is obviously required. Uh, faster Casting with a question mark because, you know, Spell Totem kind of shits on your faster casting. Cold Penetration. Uh, we have the option at like Controlled Destruction. We also have the option at like uh, Increased Crit Damage. We also have like Increased Crit Chance. I don't think I'm going to use Crit Chance though because I have Power Charges and Freeze Pulse is already a 6% Crit Chance. We do not need to use GMP. You can use fast projectiles for the lulls, but I don't, I don't really think you really need it. Um, so yeah, I guess like what? Freeze Pulse, Spell Totem, Faster Casting, Cold Pen, Control Destruction. And that's already a 5 link. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, so last link would... I don't know, last link is always situational, really. Uh, if I want bigger freezes, I can go Crit Damage. If I want faster clear speed, I can go faster Proj. If I want more consistent crit, I can go crit chance. I'm sure there's a couple other multipliers I'm just not thinking of off the top of my head. Like, I know there's Empower I can use. Uh, Empower is an option. But anyway, this is just a theory dot build for you guys, like I said. I kind of want you guys to figure out a little bit with it. But this is probably going to be, like, the immediate next character I play right when the beta wipe happens. Anyway, though, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Remember, though, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. I'll see you boys all tomorrow.